In today's video, I'm going to be cleaning up and upgrading this laptop for a friend of mine by upgrading the SSD, and then reinstalling Windows. But I'm also going to install Linux, don't worry. Before getting too far into this video, I want to apologize for my voice. I'm sort of recovering from having COVID for the last few days, and so while I feel much better, my voice is a little bit not the best. You know what's a lot better than having COVID though? The sponsor of today's video, NordPass. If you're watching this video, I imagine you spend a fair amount of time on the internet and have quite a few different accounts. And if you're not using a password manager, you might be in a bit of trouble. Fortunately, there's NordPass, an easy to use password manager created by the same cybersecurity experts that built NordVPN. NordPass lets you store all of your passwords in one place, so you never have to worry about forgetting them, and also generates complex passwords to keep your account safe. And it doesn't just save passwords. NordPass can save notes, personal details, and credit card info on up to six devices to make browsing and shopping online quicker and safer. One of the features that makes NordPass worth having is the data breach scanner, which lets you know if NordPass has detected any leaks of your account or credit card info on the web. Then it can let you know when and where the leak happened and what type of data was compromised, allowing you to do whatever is needed to keep your personal info safe. And that's only one of the many great features NordPass offers. Right now, you can get an exclusive NordPass deal plus one additional month for free by going to nordpass.com slash hardwarehaven or by using the code hardwarehaven at checkout. Step up your online security and get signed up with NordPass today. This Lenovo 80XS belongs to a friend of mine, Chance, who also happens to be a coworker. And he uses this for a few things, partly for some lightweight software that he uses to help with woodworking, but also for his kids to play some games and do homework. He's a super cool guy and he's helped me out a lot with things, including actually, he helped me just recently with a ultimate router project that should be a lot of fun. So. Stay tuned for that. He mentioned this laptop to me a little while back and that it was a little sluggish, especially in Windows, trying to load applications. And yeah, obviously it has an old hard drive and could use an SSD. So I got this pretty cheap 512 gigabyte SSD from Teen Group off of Amazon and decided to go ahead and upgrade this and make it a little bit snappier. I would have upgraded the RAM, but it already had a four gigabyte module alongside the four gigabyte soldered module. So it was pretty much already maxed out at eight gigabytes. Performing the upgrade and cleaning was pretty straightforward. And I actually want to compliment Lenovo here for using all of the same screw size and type, which made this really easy. While I had it open, I decided to go ahead and upgrade the thermal paste as well, which wasn't too bad, but it definitely could use some new thermal paste here. With everything done, it was pretty easy to just assemble it all back together and reinstall Windows. Also, I should mention that the laptop was really clean, honestly, and I'm not sure if this is because it not being used a whole lot or not being that old, or if the design was just pretty good at moving dust in and out of the case. Once I had everything put back together and reinstalled Windows, it was a much snappier experience, which is to be expected with an SSD upgrade. But I also got a tiny little bit of improvement on the CPU after changing the thermal paste. Initially, Cinebench 15 scored a three run average of 212, but after the upgrade, we got about an 11% improvement with a three run average of 236. 
Granted, there was a good amount of variance between runs, so this could be margin of error. And that about wraps everything up. I'm, I'm just kidding. We're going to put Linux on this because it's hardware haven. Over the course of this channel, I've had quite a few people ask if you could run a home server off of a laptop. And I thought this video might be a good chance to sort of trial run that. And I was really curious to see what the AMD A12-9720P with its Radeon 7 graphics were capable of here. So I installed Debian 11, Samba, and Docker, and then spooled up Portainer. After getting an SMB share set up, well, it worked as expected over a gigabit connection. So yeah, you could definitely use this just as a simple NAS using SMB. But I also, like I said, spooled up a portainer. And here I decided to just spin up a few Docker containers that I've used in the past, including Jellyfin and the Minecraft paper server I used in my Minecraft server video a while back. Minecraft ran as I expected it to, which was okay. The Minecraft paper server isn't super, super powerful because it is meant to run on lower end hardware and it seemed to run fine. And had I put a little bit more time into tweaking it, I'm sure I could have gotten it to run much better. Jellyfin, on the other hand, was, well, a different story. You see, when I was streaming some lower quality content like The Office, it ran great. But the Radeon 7 graphics aren't supported by Jellyfin for hardware transcoding, so when I tried to... <coughs> But the Radeon 7 graphics aren't supported with Jellyfin when it comes to hardware transcoding, so when I tried to play back this 4K footage at a lower bitrate and resolution, it pretty much slammed our AMD A12-9720P. I don't have a teleprompter for this video, and the fact that I remembered that is... I'm impressed with myself right now, to be honest. If you're like me and don't have a lot of 4K movies or TV shows, I mostly just have DVD rips, which are 480p or maybe I think Blu-ray 720p, I'm not sure. I don't have anything above 1080p in my Plex library, so realistically, this thing would work just fine. But if you were looking for something that could do hardware transcoding of higher resolution or higher bitrate files, then you'd probably look elsewhere. Now you may be wondering, since this is a laptop, what was the power efficiency like? and actually it was pretty good. While performing some software encoding in Jellyfin, it consumed about 41 watts and only about 17 watts at idle. After just a little bit of Googling though, I was actually able to figure out how to configure this to where I could shut the lid without putting it to sleep or leaving the monitor running. And that actually brought the idle power usage down to only 15 watts, which is pretty impressive. This all kind of makes me want to revisit the idea of a laptop server and I'm probably going to keep my eyes peeled for something broken where we don't really need the monitor. I don't know. I'll come around to it at some point as it seems like something pretty fun. And this seems somewhat promising. So if you happen to come across a laptop or small computer that has the AMD A12-9720P, should you get it? Well, maybe. If you find it for a great deal and all you're looking for something is to run some lightweight services that doesn't include transcoding and won't consume a lot of power, then yeah, it's actually not that bad. But if you don't find a good deal on it or you need something that does support hardware transcoding, then I would definitely look elsewhere, probably something more on the Intel side. Also, don't forget to click the link in the description below to get an exclusive deal on NordPass plus an additional month for free. That's about it for this one though, because I gotta get Chance his laptop back. So as always, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Ugh, COVID sucks.